Prejudice, discrimination, bigotry, all can lead to racism against individuals because of their language, ethnicity, or religion. When it comes to children, it can have a significant wear and tear effect on their developing brains, according to a Harvard study. In Latin America, I talked to a woman who focuses on promoting multiculturalism while fighting against discrimination and racism. Indira Serrana is a Colombian model, actress, activist, and now children's book author. She uses her personal experiences to provide guidance in an effort to cultivate a new generation of upstanding citizens. Cartagena's beautiful beaches sprinkled with colonial architecture and rich history makes it a hot spot for tourists. During a visit to this port city in Colombia, I attended the Hay Festival, a literary celebration where authors from around the globe gather to discuss the most pressing issues. That is where I met Indira Serrano. How would you describe the genesis of it? How did it all come to you that I want to create this children's book? I want to share all my experiences, all my, the life I've lived in, and the way I've changed my own perception about how I am, who I am, and how I look. Uh, and the hair has been a really big issue in this, in this change of perception. Um, here in Latin America, we almost all of us, especially in Caribbean, we've grown with the idea that we have to change our hair uh, in order to be accepted. So uh, at some point when I was modeling, somebody taught me that my hair was perfect the way it was. And that was like, he set me free. Uh, he let me be the way I am with no makeup, with nothing, just me. And that helped my whole life and my career. And at some point in my life, I created um, conferences called me, called um, changing mindsets would be the, the name in English, and and uh, I realized that I wanted to talk about my experience and about the experiences I have collected in my way as an actress, and give these experiences to others. And Rosa La Crespa, my book, is uh, just one tiny, tiny part of it. The the part that really touched me about the hair, about the little girl who one day wake up and says, who's gonna be my hair today? And what adults around, the, around her uh, do with that information and how she finally set herself free. I would really love to have that information when I was a little girl. I, I, I remember my aunts and my grandmas telling me that I have to hide my hair all the time. I remember uh, people around me uh, making me believe I have a, um, a setup, a bad thing, a, a defect, defect, I don't know. They made me believe that there's something wrong with me, with my hair and with the color of my skin. And uh, I have to work really hard in my youth to change this mindset. I would really love to see this book, but, but, uh, if I would have that, I wouldn't do the way I have done. In D. Ross studied textile design and developed a career in modeling, acting, and she is now also an activist. Well, there are so many events in your life that obviously induce great pride, but I want to kind of measure that by the level of pride you have in creating a book like this, that you know that there's a little girl that you're connecting with who's going to read this book, that you, if you were that little girl and you'd read it, it could change the course of your life. I mean, people don't write books like that. Uh, <laughs> that's an important thing to be able to say that you wrote a book that could really change how a child sees themselves. And then the thought of a child, a little girl reading that book and kind of having this epiphany, a change in how she views the world, how she views herself. Well, let me go a little in the back about it. Um, when, I, when I discovered that my 
hair was a beautiful hair, it was during a fashion show and I was making a shooting and the photographer told me, I'm gonna make you an afro. And I cried because I, I didn't want uh, to use my natural hair and wear my natural hair. And when I did it, never, never went back. But when I came back to Colombia and started acting in Colombia, I was making a soap opera and a, a, a mother came to me with a little girl and she says, she used to hate her hair until she saw you on TV. And uh, that was like epiphany for me because at that point, I under it was in this point in, in which I understood that I wasn't doing it only for me, but for some other girls, many other girls that was looking at me on TV and I understood the power of representation. Uh, I, I, I was representing some women and little girls, even if I didn't want it. And I start to think about it. And when I start to think about changing mindsets, I suddenly wanted to, to write. And I now said that the book writes itself. Uh, it writes itself in verse. Uh, it writes itself for children. I wasn't thinking about writing a book about, for children. I just start writing and it appears. And the book itself is like circular because the story starts and finishes in the same place. Uh, and this little girl that is written there is me at some, at some point, but it's so many girls that I have known and that little girl in, that I met uh, like almost 10, 20 years ago and the process of writing, it was like more like receiving. <laughs> um, I know it doesn't sound like esoteric, but it's not. It's like, this is what it should be here. Uh, this is what I need to communicate. But uh, that process, uh, and I know that you mentioned that you, you had a, a mother come to you and say that it, it did impact uh, her daughter. But uh, the book obviously is also gonna have that kind of an impact. Um, that's gotta give you a, a great sense of pride. But, and I wanna kind of tap into that. What are the thoughts when you finish it? It's gonna go to publication, you know, it's gonna be in the hands okay. of kids. But also, um, talk a little bit about that. But if you can, I, there has to be some pain going back and thinking through all of this stuff and putting it on the page. I know you got it from up there, inspiration or whatever. Can you talk about that process and having to kind of revisit, you know, your thoughts about hair and, and put it down on paper? Well, in fact, the point is that uh, when I wrote it, I have talked a lot about it. I have uh, played many of these girls on my career as an actress. So I have had the opportunity to, to clean myself, to think about it, to cry about it while acting. I have played this little girl over and over again. Well, the woman that these little girls became. And uh, when, I, when I wrote it, this catharsis, this is already done, mm, you know, okay. because it was, I, I already have that process by acting. Now I'm gonna write, but I am light now. I am free of that feelings. Uh, I have so, other many, so many other feelings in, my, in me about many other situations that makes me feel, um, sad or mad but the hair is a is a place in which it's that i want to share the experience and there are so many other experiences and hair is just the first one it's the beginning of the journey but there are so many other experiences that i want to write about and i want to uh, share about what are they right now i'm working about tdh um, uh, attention deficit. Mm -hmm. um, this is the important 
issue for, for me because my, my older son has it. Um, but I, I want to talk about um, problems with LGTB community. Um, I want to talk about elders and the discrimination to, to, to elder people. I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> We're all headed there someday, right? <laughs> yeah, but we, we live as if not. All of us live as if we are not going to be all at some point in our, in our life. Um, and there are so other issues that make me, makes me cry, makes me feel bad. And I'm working on it. Hair is, I'm free now. Colombia wrote a new chapter in its history, along with Gustavo Petro. Also came Francia Marquez as the country's new vice president. She is a woman who rose from poverty, and she is also the first Afro woman to hold this position. I want to talk to you about women and women of color and whether or not you're optimistic. And, and I phrase that question by looking at the vice president of your country. Okay. Um, and looking at you, you know, and, and the fact that little kids can say, look, there's the vice president and they can flip on the TV and they can see you. Does that give you a sense of optimism? Yeah, of course. Uh, things are getting better, better and better, little by little. But I think they could be a little bit faster. Um, there are so many things um, that have to be changed and I, I'm working on that, but I hope this is not just uh, like a moment, you know? Like, um, let's make a moment about let's black women and keep on our life and doing the same things all the time, over and over again. One of the things you mentioned before we started rolling is that it's not just about hair, that uh, you wanted to go a little bit deeper, that this is multiracial families that you want to talk about and, and kind of like it, it broaden it. Um, can you talk about your thinking that went into this and, and making sure that it wasn't just, you know, this isn't just a book about hair, it's, it's much larger. Intersectionality for me is a big issue now. I, I have started to learning about it and I found that it really is the way I think. Uh, we, all of the privilege and all the vulnerabilities we have and how they intersect between them and how that makes us a different experience in our, in our lives. And I, I, well, lately, I have started to talk a lot about uh, us perceiving ourselves from our privileges because when we talk about intersectionality, all the time we are talking about our vulnerabilities. No? Me, despite being a black woman, a Latin black woman, woman, I have got all my goals and blah, blah, blah. Look how wonderful I am. Uh, we like to, to, talk our, to talk about our history since the point of view of the hero. No? But there is another point is our privilege. Some of them are given to us uh, and we haven't done anything for them. Um, I have this aspect and I was uh, able to be a model. And that makes my experience as a black woman completely different to, a, to another black woman, which have not this aspect. So. When you realize your, when you realize that, and you see your life through your privileges, you are able to be more empathic around you, uh, and that's the big scenario in which I want to put the book. Uh, it's not a book just about the hair; it's an excuse for us to be talking about differences and self-acceptance. When I think of actresses, uh, a lot of times it. The words are forced into your mouth. Uh, you, you recite them. Uh, you aren't the person ge generally jotting them down, writing a, a book. Uh, was it a different process to, to go through this? And, and talk to me about just kind of the evolution of you as a person. You know, you're a model, you're an actress, now you're an author. I mean, do you think about all these sorts of things? 
Well, um, I think I think all of my dreams has taken me to the next step all the time. And the only thing I have made, uh, done is to listen to my dreams, uh, um, pursue pursue him, my, pursue my dreams, follow my dreams. Uh, when I when I became a model, I wasn't looking for a, for a modeling career. I was studying uh, textile designing, uh, fabric designing. And at, at the point I decided I wanted to be a model, I decided I wanted to be the best model of the world. And I couldn't make it. I, I didn't make it because I was old. I was 19 years old at that point, so I couldn't reach Europe at that point. Uh, but the, the looking for that dream took me to Bogota, then to Chile, then to Venezuela, looking for, for that opportunity and looking for that dream, I became an actress. And then I wanted to be the best actor, actress I could ever be. And I started studying and I started uh, trying to connect with the characters I was playing. And in this process of connecting with the characters, I discover empathy before the war was um, like so famous as empathy is now or everybody is using the word empathy empathy before that I start looking for empathy in my characters and this this search this looking that took me to my conferences took me to changing man's mindset and took me to the need of talking what I have discovered with others, and that took me to write. En ese momento no entendía muy bien y empezamos a hacer círculos con mujeres de muchos, de muchas experiencias de vida diferentes que lo único que compartían eran ser mujeres afro. By sharing her personal experiences, Indira's goal is to encourage individuals to live life without the fear of being judged because of race, sexual orientation, or social status. Talk about this personal project. I, I believe if you were to translate it into English, it would be something like reconstructing imagery. Reimagining mindsets. Re exactly. Describe for us what it is uh, and what the mission is behind it. Um, Reimagining mindsets is like um, um, conversations, like conf uh, conferences. But uh, what is behind that is the idea that there are so many uh, mindsets we have uh, that we consider normal, correct, established, and they are not. And that mindsets are hurting people, that mindsets are keeping people out of their own potential, and their mindsets are creating wars, are against peace, especially in a place like Colombia, so many of these mindsets are uh, making people uh, being apart. Um, I'm working with empathy, self-empowerment, um, self-acceptance, collaboration, especially collaboration between people that are uh, living um, similar vulnerabilities and um, um, worthiness because all these things are um, the issues that have taken my life and in which I have made my own reflections. And I, now I'm taking this message to different communities. I, I've taken in two ways. For vulnerable communities, uh, and talking about how this worthiness and about self-acceptance could make them, could help them to reach their potential and to privileged communities and um, make them understand a little perspective about empathy and about collaboration with others. Let me ask one final question, because you uh, mentioned the word privilege earlier, and clearly uh, one would look at me and say, you know, I'm, I'm a ben I benefit from white privilege. There's, there's no doubt about it. And clearly someone would look at you and say, I, I bet she's had some hard knocks in life. Uh, because the fact that she's a black woman, uh, a, a black and also a woman. Uh, that, that's the world we live in, that there's a lot of misogyny and there's a lot of racism. Um, can you describe that journey and what you'd like people like myself to know about it? 
Well, I've discovered that everybody has their own struggles. Maybe you are privileged, but only you know what are your struggles, no? And I, I've discovered that it's not just about uh, put you and me in, in two categories. Yeah, no, in, in the two final extremes, points. Extremes, Yeah, guess, in two yes. extremes. Yeah. It's not just about that. It's the realize that everybody is in a different place in privilege and uh, in vulnerabilities. And we have to uh, where where we are. I have my own privilege. And I have people who have not the privilege I have had. And maybe you have your vulnerabilities that I don't know which are. And so many people doesn't know who they are, but you know what vulnerabilities you have had and how that has changed the experience of your life. Um, this is not like what you should do. This is um, just a refle reflection um, uh, that make us think about how my experience in life uh, could help others and could help myself to see the other in a more, in a broader perception, to be more empathic at, at the end. Fantastic conversation. Thanks so much for your book. Thanks so much for visiting with us. I love your hair. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>